my name is Evelyn. This is Jessica. We're super excited today to be um, crafting it up with you. We're going to be doing piñatas for the Manos a la Obra Vida Latina program. Uh, we're going to get started and Jessica is going to start talking to us about piñatas and the history of them. So piñatas are a tradition that date back up to 700 years. We first witnessed this as Marco Polo came to China and he saw the Chinese decorating cow figurines with different colorful paper and filling them with seeds. They used this to break the figurines and celebrate the coming of the new year. Marco Polo brought the idea back to Europe and from then they kind of modified the idea of the new year. Instead of celebrating that, they used it to celebrate Lent. The Italians were the first to coin the word piñata as their version of the piñata was made out of clay pot, which is what piñata means. Now, from Europe, the tradition came all the way back to the Americas as the Spanish brought it with them during their colonization. However, they were surprised to see that the Aztecs already had a very similar tradition. Aztec priests would take a clay pot at the end of a stick and decorate it with colorful feathers. They would fill this pot with goodies to celebrate the birthday of their god of war, Huitzilopochtli. So the Spanish saw this, took the opportunity, and remodified this tradition by placing seven spikes on the clay pot representing the seven deadly sins. So this would help them introduce religion into the Aztec life. So now Evelyn's done to tell us about how we use piñatas today. Thank you, Jessica. So Jessica gave so many cool um, like facts and history about piñatas. We know piñatas today, and she mentioned the piñatas that have the seven sticks that point out and look like a star. Those are kind of the piñatas you think about, but there's endless possibilities today of what piñatas can look like. Um, we're very lucky if you live in the LA area, we have the um, LA Piñata District. If you ever go down there, I strongly encourage you to walk down that Piñata District and you'll see rows and rows and rows of different piñatas. It's a really beautiful scene to see, um, but there's unicorn piñatas, Christmas themed piñatas when that time comes around. There's so many possibilities and we're very lucky to have this craft and you know we also in your kit you'll be able to make your sandia, your watermelon piñata and then you know, once you're done, you can create anything. Um, like we have this hamburger that's not part of the kit, but you can make at home. You can make a cat. Halloween's coming up soon, right? You can make some pumpkins, um, but we're gonna get started. Um, you will need your cereal boxes to find, so start looking around your home. If you might have some, you know, you might have finished your Lucky Charms and you get to now create it into a piñata. Um, Jessica is gonna start us off on the first steps of this. We do also have our Lucky um, instructions that were made by a wonderful staff member shout out to Sheridan um, but we're gonna get started and she'll show you what's inside um, your kit as well so your kit will include some tissue paper some glue construction paper ribbon an activity sheet the history of piñatas a trace out for the watermelon and your instructions so let's get started step one you get your cereal box. You're gonna need two for this whole project. So we're gonna take apart our cereal box. There's a little tab here to make it easier to take it apart. All the way to the bottom. And here's our first box. We're gonna need our second box for the strips. This is gonna be for a watermelon shape. So we have our trace out here. Let's go ahead and cut that guy out. So we're gonna use this shape on our cereal box. And do it on both sides. Should look like this. So once you do cut it out, you should have two little guys shaped like this. So now we're gonna take our other cereal box and line the strips at about an inch to an inch and a quarter. And we're gonna cut them that way. 
feel free to use another cereal box to measure it out too. So, it should also look like this. Once you cut those out, you'll have your strips like this. And Evelyn's gonna help us with the next steps. Okay, cool. Now we have our watermelon cutouts and you should have some strips. Um, you will only mainly need about two strips for your piñata, um, but we're gonna get started. What I found to be the easiest was to get some tape. You will need a lot of tape, so have that on hand. That'll be your best friend but to make this. Um, and you're gonna go around and add the tape. So the sticky part will be facing what you'll want to be the inside of the piñata. Um, so I, I have it like this. Um, so I added the strip and then I stuck it as I went. And let me show you. So here's the strip and sticky part is facing this part because we'll stick it inside. And you're just going to be going up. And right here where we added that second strip, it'll need a little extra support. So we'll add extra tape on there. Hold it together. Cool. So we'll just keep going around and then we'll do a bend, a bend right here for this curve that we have coming. And you can be aligning it as you go. We need one little piece. Oh, I ran out of strips. Jessica, can you hand me a strip from over there? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna keep going. Well, I can kind of cut this out, I think up to here, right? We're gonna cut a line and try to curve it. Okay, so I still have some extra. I'm gonna cut that out. Perfect. So then this edge. Ooh, looking good, looking good. Okay. I'll add that extra support I added for that middle part here. And we have kind of like the base. Now we just have to add, this is kind of like a little box, a triangle box, the lid. And you'll also just go around and add some tape. And you're shaping it as you go. I like to do kind of like the corners and so we can have it set in stone while I then go make it more firm and sturdier. So this does require a lot of tape. If an edge is popping out, usually, I'm just gonna trim it. Actually, there's some tape on there. You kinda have like the shape of it. a bunch of tape I'm still adding a lot because I want it to be really firm so when I add the tissue paper it looks really great and sturdy now we're using small tape here but if you were to want to make at home maybe a big size piñata you might use cardboard paper instead of 
um, cardboard instead of um, a cereal box and maybe duct tape instead of small tape, right? So you would adjust that to make a large pinata. Okay. Okay, we have the shape of our pinata. Woo! Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next step. I'm still adding tape. I like a lot of tape on it. Um, we're gonna move on to our next step, which is the tissue paper part, which is really important, right? It makes the look of the piñata. Um, I have here, and you should have, some green and some red. So how did we get to this fringe? Let me show you. So you have your tissue paper. We're gonna fold it in half. And we're just gonna keep folding and then fold that in half. And then we're gonna fold that. We'll line it up. Oh no. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna fold that. So then you wanna put three fingers and then kind of measure it so it should be about three fingers length and cut that. So cool, leave it folded because we're gonna make some lines don't go all the way just make go about like leave just leave a top because we'll be using this to glue so we'll glue that and then this fringe will be hanging down so we're just gonna keep cutting it and then when you open it you should have ta -da, such a beautiful fringe um, and we're gonna add that to our piñata so I'm gonna make this my front and we're gonna glue it so you'll just add a bunch of glue. Now for the sample that we had, let me grab it actually. We have the green, right? So that'll be at the bottom and we wanna always start from the bottom up um, making our piñata. So we're gonna add some green. I added about two, three rows here, but I was thinking it would also look nicer with a couple more greens, but it's totally up to you how you want your piñata to look like. Um, I'm gonna start adding some green and show you guys what that looks like. So you have your long strip of fringe and you're just gonna, so the thing about the piñata being a watermelon, it curves, right? So you're gonna go curving. And go up. And you'll notice some bubble air gaps don't worry about those because we're gonna layer another, you know, side, a line of fringe and that's gonna cover it. You won't even notice. It'll all be covered up and it'll look super cute at the end. So we do have the sides. I did fringe the sides and add some there, but I didn't do the back. It's totally up to you if you want to. Um, this is cute to decorate. I'm gonna hang it on a wall so you won't be seeing the back, but if you want to, you can totally do that. I think we, ha we have enough um, tissue paper for you to do that. So feel free to do that. But I'm gonna do the sides too, right? So let me grab my glue again. And we're just gonna fold this this way. Cool. And I'll cut this. And then add some more here. Yay, it's looking like a piñata. Nice, so then I'm gonna, I like to do it either right on top of the green or a little above to add, oh no, my glue. <laughs> Let's grab another glue stick uh, to add more, you know, more fringe to it. I want it to look fluffy, a fluffy piñata. And then I'll add this on top. Ooh. Now I'm gonna add a row of red to kind of show some some colors on there, right? But don't forget when you're doing do your sides and it, you'll do all the way up the sides all the way up till you reach the corner, um, and it'll look like this, and then the back if if you'd like to. But I'm gonna add some red, and I got that cut up too. Same way you'll also fold it. Ooh. 
And we have the red layer. And then you can see, you can no longer see like those bubble air gaps we saw in the beginning. Um, so that's the same. Don't worry too much about this top part because we're gonna go covering it as we go. Um, cool, so we're also gonna talk about, you know, what does a watermelon have? It has seeds, so we added those. Um, and you're gonna get some black paper, construction paper you have around, and you're just gonna cut those seeds up and do it to however you, you know, I added a bunch of seeds, <laughs> but you could add a few seeds if you like, or no seeds, maybe you like a seedless watermelon. Look at this seed that I just made. Okay, I'm gonna have to make some adjustments because this is a weird looking seed. Actually, let's make it a little smaller. <laughs> but yeah, you're kind of just adjusting as you go. And then you'll just glue it, right? And glue it on there, a little bit of glue. I'm gonna add another seed, like here. So cute, just keep adding the seeds. And then same thing, you'll add your eyes and your smile. Um, with construction paper, but we hope you had fun. Oh, don't forget if you're gonna want to be hanging your piñata You're gonna use that string and your best friend tape will do the job sticking that on I added a lot of tape as you can see, but then you'll have a hanging piñata ready to I don't know You can even add candy on it um, candy in it. We have some candy um, But you could add candy or you can just leave it in your room and decorate your room gift it to someone if you'd like It'll make a great addition to any bedroom. I think Thank you guys so much for joining us. Please make sure to check out the other Vida Latina programs. For any further information, make sure to go to www.lbpl.org. See you next time. Bye.